Dear all, good day. This webinar has been pre-recorded and some of the most frequently asked questions about these two programs will be covered throughout the broadcast. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to our ACI information webinar that will be touching on both of our health management related initiatives, the airport health accreditation known as the AHA and the airport health measures audit program. I am Danny Boutin, Director of Assessments and Accreditation at ACI World, and it is my pleasure to be your host uh, for today's webinar. ACI has been involved for, from the beginning of the current crisis in promoting the great efforts deployed from airports, and still today, we are advocating on their behalf at ICAO and with all stakeholders. In addition to developing a series of tools such as publications, webinars, and topics related to the current COVID-19 crisis and participated in writing the ICAO CART document, we also launched the Airport Health Accreditation, the AHA, and partnered with Bureau Veritas to launch an on-site audit program providing airports the worldwide known safeguard label certification. Today, you'll have the chance to hear from two airports that successfully achieved the AHA and the uh, audit program, and they will explain why it was important for a large network airport group to conduct the AHA exercise for, for all of their airports and get what drives a large European airport to benchmark itself through an audit process and ensure the implementation of their health measures planning was well done. I am joined today by Jose Angel Martinez Sanchez, Director of Airport Network and Regulatory Affairs at the Grupo Aeroportuario Pacifico in Mexico. Frédéric Chaillet, Head of Airlines and Airport Business Unit at Bureau Veritas, and Mr. Ivan Basato, Executive Vice President from Airport Management Aeroporti di Roma. So our agenda today for this webinar will consist of an overview of the current situation with the AHA program, which was launched in late August of 2020. A look at how Grupo Aeroportuario Pacifico, known as GAP, used AHA to ensure that they were considering all aspects in through all of their management system management approach. Some details of the uh, audit program that will be done by uh, Frederic. And we will be closing with uh, we'll conclude with Mr. Basato, who will demonstrate the uh, importance of conducting evaluation of all measures to ensure a coherent implementation of processes and preparing for the new normal. And then, if time permits, we'll go and have some questions. So, a little, uh, a little overview, a rapid on the uh, AHA program. Uh, Basically, the program was created as an off-site uh, assessment based on the ICAO card document. And it was kind of put together where we would uh, be able to give the chance to the airport to assess what they are currently doing and uh, trying to uh, identify where there are some gaps and some of the vulnerabilities and then be, being able to uh, rectify them and, and uh, against the card recommendation. Uh, as I said, this is an off-site assessment, so the, the evaluation is based on the elaboration of coherent management protocols. And it is the only program that it's important to mention that is the only program that's supported by ICAO in all of the industry. We are also, for those interested, working on the reaccreditation program, and we'll, we think that we'll be able to have that available before the mid-year of 2021. So uh, we'll be able to continue the uh, the displaying of the program in the, in the in the years to come. So just a little numbers on uh, how we are doing so far after nine months of uh, operating the program. So we've got 361 uh, airports participating officially in in the program uh, that are either have been uh, accredited, part of the 289 airports that have been accredited, and uh, also uh, are currently either under review or working on uh, preparing their documentation in order to get the uh, receive the accreditation. The thing that's important to, to, to notice is that it's very well balanced in all of our regions, so it's not necessarily specific to one region, even though uh, Europe uh, is probably the one predominantly that's uh, a little bit higher, but it is important to notice that 
it's pretty much uh, equal across the uh, across the board. Uh, if you think in, if you take in consideration the amount of uh, of members per region, it is very very well balanced. Understanding that this program fits well for all airports of all sizes and all difficulty. And if we take a snapshot of what the uh, program looks like uh, in terms of its uh, how it's been spreading around the uh, around the globe, uh, you see that. Uh, Pretty much uh, all regions have been uh, implementing uh, this uh, program. So, without any further ado, we'll move on to our uh, first uh, panelist, which is uh, Jose Angel Martinez from uh, GAP, that will uh, touch on the uh, AHA and uh, how GAP brought that program across their whole uh, network. And uh, he'll be able to give us an overview of the, the company and also. Uh, further details. Go ahead, um, Jose Angel. Thank you very much, Danny. Uh, well, my name is uh, Jose Angel Martinez, and I'm the Chief of Airports and Related Revenues of uh, the company, of GAP. And we are in charge of uh, airport planning, operations, uh, safety, security, air service development. And we are also in charge of coordinating all the airports of, of the group. And well, for me, it's, uh, it's really a pleasure to be here with you and have the chance to share with you our experience with the ACI health accreditation uh, program. So let's, let's start with the, with the presentation. Next, please. Danny, next. Can you go next, please? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> before getting to the substance, uh, I would like to make a quick overview of what is a gap, because I understand the majority of the people that is listening to or following this presentation uh, probably know nothing or just very little about, about the group. GAP, Grupo Aeroportuario del Pacifico, is one of the three private airport operators in, in Mexico. We are actually the largest one. We operate 12 airports in the central Pacific region of the country, and two additional airports in, in Jamaica, one in Montego Bay and the other one in, in Kirsten. All this, you know, the figures that you can see here in the map are figures from 2019, so our pre pandemic uh, figures. Our main airport is Guadalajara, that closed the year 2019 with around 15 million passengers. But we have other important airports in the group in terms of uh, passenger, for example, Tijuana with around 9 million passengers. Tijuana is just the border with the United States in the north of the country. And also Los Cabos and Puerto Vallarta, two very important touristic destinations here in Mexico. And both airports closed uh, the year 2019 with more than 5 million passengers. In general terms, <clears throat> sorry, if we, if we take a look, I mean, we consider the whole the whole network. Uh, we we close the year 2019 with almost 49 million passengers, and last year we had around 27 million. So that means a reduction of around 44 percent. Gap is a it's a listed company on the New York Stock Exchange since the year 2006, and among its investors is Aena that as you probably know is the largest airport operator in the world. So next please Danny. In this slide we can we can see that the passenger traffic evolution in gap in the year 2020 and how it compares with the year 2019. Uh, we can see I mean how it happened all, all around the world we, we can see the, the, the huge impact of the pandemic since March onwards and throughout the whole year but despite this you know very very difficult year that we had we are still having uh, if we take a look at the main airports in mexico among the 10 with the fastest recovery post covid five are gap servers and in the case of tijuana it was the, the the airport last year not only in mexico but in the whole region where the traffic drop was the lowest with only a decrease of 29% compared with the year 2019. And 
there are many reasons for that. Some of them have nothing to do with our management, but with the mix of airports that we have and with the type of passengers that normally use our airports. Next, please, Danny. Thank you. So let's go into the main scope of the, of the presentation. When in March, April 2020, we, we saw the dramatic passenger drop and we began to understand the medium term impact of the pandemic, we started to think about a strategy to try to mitigate the possible consequences of, of this situation. And, and that strategy would have four main pillars. The first one was cost reduction to try to you know, balance our financials and our economic situation. But the second one was to renegotiate with the, the investment plan committed with the, uh, with the authority. Obviously, we were not able to, to invest the same amount of money in the same period in the following years. The third one was to create specific incentives and discounts plans to help and back the industry in those very, very difficult moments. I mean, airlines, handlers, and, and commercial partners. And the fourth one was to uh, put in place in our 14 airports whatever measures required to try to let people know that we were doing our best to, to minimize the risk of transmission of the disease in our facilities and therefore to recover the passengers confident in using the air transport system. We were experts in doing the, the first three things, but uh, I mean, we, we, we did them, those things before in the past, but we had never done the fourth one. So uh, we, you know, at that moment, and with so many information coming from different sources, we needed to understand what type of measures we should apply in our airports and how we could do that in a reliable way for our clients and for our stakeholders. And this is one of the things that the ACI program was, was bringing and was you know, offering and bringing to the table. In this slide and in the next one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just uh, explain it very quickly how was the accreditation process with the ACI team. The first step was to engage with the, with the team. We did that in July 2020 with the team in Montreal as soon as we knew that they were going to launch this accreditation, this accreditation process. <clears throat> At that moment, uh, you know, Gap, we were very active in searching uh, the best international practices and measures in order to apply them in, in our efforts. And indeed, we had already engaged with the health department of a Mexican university, a very well-known Mexican university, Tecnológico in Monterrey, to help us define and apply all these measures and procedures in our, in our group. And although this, uh, you know, collaboration with the university was very, very helpful for us. It was lacking mainly of you know, airport operator perspective. Um, so that, I mean, at that point, that they would, you know, probably diminish the value of the work that we we're doing and the effect over the confidence of the clients that we we're trying to, to recover. Um, the second point of the, of the uh, process, the second step of the process was to complete a questionnaire that our colleagues from ACI sent us. They sent us a very long questionnaire to be completed by each one of the airports that we that we have in the group. And we were asked not only to, you know, answer to to all the questions, but also to provide evidences that prove that we were actually complying with all the requirements needed to be accredited in the process. All these uh, evidences were in pictures, uh, drawings, documents cleaning and disinfection plans, and standards uh, from the Mexican authority, etc. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, the process from the beginning was very intense and very thorough. And finally, we could take advantage of that collaboration that we had with the university and uh, of the work we had done in advance of the engagement uh, with the ACI. And we were able to complete all the documents in around four weeks time. We send back all this information to our colleagues in Montreal. Next, please, Danny. So the third you know, step was, of course, the review and validation of this information that we sent from our colleagues in the ACI team. And that took uh, 
another you know, three or four weeks. And finally, the last step in the process was obviously the issuance of the accreditation for each one of the, of the airports that we have with the group. And just to let you know, uh, San Jose del Cabo was the second in the world to obtain the accreditation. Montego Bay was the first airport in the Caribbean region uh, to be accredited. And GAP, we were the first group in the world to have all its airport accredited in the ACI Health Program. And I mean, to be honest with you, that was like a source of proud for all the team because you know, despite all the difficulties and the things that were happening at that moment, we felt that we were doing you know things properly. So that was really, really helpful for us. Next, please, Danny. Well, here, just showing here an example of a certificate accreditation in the case of Aeropuerto Internacional de los Cabos. It was issued in August 2020, and it's uh, actually valid for one year, so it will expire in August uh, 2021. And we hope that we don't have to renew this certificate because it would probably mean that the pandemic is over, and that would be you know, great news for the industry and, and for the and for the world. So let's see what happens in the following months. Uh, well, we received one of these uh, certificates for each one of the airports of, of the group, and that's it. I just wanted to show you how it looked like. Next, please, Danny. Here I'm showing you some images of the measures that we are still applying in our airports. Uh, we we use uh, you know these pictures as a evidence in the process with the ACI team. Of course, now all these images seem so familiar for all of us because the majority of the airports around the world uh, already apply uh, this, this type of measures. Next, Danny. Next, but you know, at that moment in, in, in July, August 2020, these this images were not so common or so familiar. Next. So why was the ACI health accreditation program worth it? Well, for, for many reasons, just to mention here a few. Because in, in one of the worst moments in the history for the industry, if not the worst, I would say at least the worst in the last, I don't know, 60 or 70 years, the ACI program came to give the airports a clear and reliable roadmap to follow in order to face the pandemic, becoming a key initiative to recover the people's confidence in the air transport system. Internally, it helped us to find and apply the proper measures and procedures to minimize the transmission of the disease, and externally put in value the effort that we were doing as a group to recover the traffic. And the most important thing, GAP was perceived as a reliable, committed, and strong partner by stakeholders, authority, airlines, local governments, businessmen, and tourism associations. It was really, really helpful for us. Next, please. And just to finish with my presentation, I just wanted to share with you some of the recognitions that we received uh, during the year 2020. We not only engaged with the ACI, but also with the World Travel and Tourism Council. Actually, we were also the first airport group in Mexico to receive the safe travel stamp from WTTC. And as I mentioned during my presentation, we had a very close and very useful collaboration with the University of Monterrey. They were in charge of you know, revising all the measures from a medical, from a health perspective. And not only that, but they were also in charge of you know, auditing all these measures and procedures on site in each one of the airports of, of the group. And that's it. That's all from my side. Uh, I really appreciate your, your attention. Thank you very much. Um, stay safe, take care, and we really hope that we can overcome this uh, difficult situation in a very short time. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jose Angel. I, I think it's, uh, it's, very, um, it's very interesting that you, you brought up right away the, 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 as soon as all this happened, reached out not only to, to, to ACI, but I mean, the, the fact that you guys went to universities and, and tr start working, trying to find some collaboration in order to make sure that 
there was not going to be any uh, any dip or any any holes or any gaps uh, left behind. Making sure that everything is covered is quite interesting, and I think that shows and that's a good example of airports always working in partnership uh, with uh, either authorities or other organizations in order to make sure that. The, the community that you serve is uh, is not left behind. So that's that that was very uh, very interesting. That's what I take uh, from uh, your presentation. Thank you very much. So next uh, next presenter will be Frédéric Chaillet from uh, Bureau Veritas, and he will be uh, explaining a little bit more on the details of the uh, safeguard and uh, ACI um, partnership that uh, that we have with Bureau Veritas. Uh, Frédéric. Thank you, Danny. My name is Frédéric Chaillet, in charge of airport activities at Bureau Veritas Aeronautical and Space Agency, based in France. Um, as the aviation industry continues towards welcoming an increasing number of passengers, unfortunately, it depends uh, the region we consider, and uh, mainly plan for a sustained long-term recovery, many new health measures as it has been presented, have been introduced and at airports to ensure continuous cleaning, reduction of risk of infection, while reassuring the traveling public that air travel is safe. Um, this uh, ACI Airport Health Measure Audit Program provides airports with an on-site visit that looks at the implementation status and efficiency of their health measure and its supervision process. This allow airport uh, to keep on enhancing its approach on ensuring that they are maintaining a continuous monitoring approach on its management of health and safety of its passengers and all stakeholders at the airport. The SAI Airport Health Measures Audit Program aligns the airport efforts across the entire value chain. Once the airport has successfully completed the process, it will be granted the Global Reputed Safeguard Label which is also awarded in hotels, restaurants, shops, and airline industry, rounding up all activities of the passenger journey. The label is jointly promoted by ACI and Bureau Veritas. The next one. Just a few words on Bureau Veritas. As you may know, Bureau Veritas is a recognized world leader in testing, inspection, and certification services. Our mission is at the heart of key challenges, quality, health and safety, environmental protection and social responsibility. Through a wide range of expertise, impartiality and independence, we foster confidence between companies, public authorities and clients. Bureau Veritas has a worldwide footprint with more than 1,500 offices and laboratories dispatched in more than 140 countries. Uh, as you may know also, we have a deep expertise in health and safety with more than 2,000 ISO 45,000 qualified auditors around the world. Following COVID-19 pandemic, Bureau Veritas has launched a new program with a dedicated label to support business resumption. Next one. This label. This label is named Safeguard. It addresses the, sp the specific risk at all places where people live and work by checking that protective measures are properly set up and implemented. It is an harmonized standard by based on international and national health requirements, best practices and recommendations. And as mentioned, it covers every step of the passenger journey from his home to his destination. As an example, a traveler on its way to the airport can use a taxi or metro where he can easily see safeguard label on the taxi door. Same for the hotel, shop, restaurant at the airport and during his laser with theater. Uh, Bureau Veritas has a worldwide agreement, for example, with Accor Hotel. So you can find lots of hotels at your airports with the safeguard label. The status of each site uh, which receives the safeguard label is available on a dedicated public website. That's the transparency of the label. The main principle of the label, as explained at the beginning, jointly promoted by ACI and Bureau Veritas, is the on-site audit 
to ensure the effective implementation of health and safety measures. Um, as Safeguard Label is encompassing all domains, this will allow also to perform benchmark between airports, but also with other industries in the aim of a continuous improvement of airports practices. The audits are performed by health and safety auditors based in the country or the vicinity of host airports country with a wide knowledge of the local regulation and practices and allowing the audit to be performed in the local language. This is a key for the success of the audit. The granting of the label will allow the airport to communicate its health and safety commitment to its passenger, but also to the staff, all stakeholders and so on. We will show later on the, the type of uh, stickers. The next one, yeah. the audit process, concerning the audit process, it will, it will be conducted through a documentation review, preparation of the audit, followed by an on-site audit, including the management system assessment to see how health and measures are managed by the airport. And of course, a visual inspection of airport operation on-site to check the correct implementation of sanitary measures. Um, the main principle is to follow the passenger journey through the airport from departure to arrival, check-in, baggage drop area, security control, waiting areas, airport services, boarding and disembarking area, and baggage claim. Um, only the services under the airport responsibility will be verified. This is something very important. The checklist developed and that the auditor used covers all aspects of sanitary measures such as hygiene, cleaning and sanitizing, personal protective equipment or physical distancing. Just a quick reminder, it also encompasses all ICAO CART recommendations and of course ACI documentation. So we can see here an example of a safeguard label. Um, once the airport has successfully completed the process, it will be granted the label. That means that the airport will receive a certificate, but also stickers, as you can see, that can be displayed at all airport entrance on airport screens, wherever you want. Uh, that's all direct communication to passengers, staff, and the public online or at the airport. Uh, it's, your, it's your choice, to, uh, how you want to communicate. The passenger can check the status of the airport by using the QR code, which is uh, in integrated in the sticker, which will direct him to the Safeguard Label website. For the label application process, the certification is of course voluntary with a request to join the program initiated by the airport. The first step for the airport is to apply through SEI World and its website or the regional offices of SEI. Um, after that, BV will dispatch experts from their regional offices. The delay could be quite quick and we, it will allow the audit to be the most likely conducted in the country official languages and with people knowing the local regulations. A kickoff meeting will be done before the visit and lead to the presentation of the team, the methodology and agree the timeline. Also, we know that uh, for airport, we need to organize uh, uh, airport pass to go to the air side, so this is something uh, we deal at the, at the beginning of the process. The work on site will lead to the creation of a report which should be delivered within uh, seven days of completion of the visit. The label will be granted about successful completion of the audit and that all non compliance are properly closed. And finally, concerning the pricing, it is really specific to each airport depending on the traffic. Uh, the open service terminal uh, at the day you are going to perform the audit, um, it depends on the ge geographical area. So uh, you, you may ask uh, ACI as uh, explained in the process previously, and we will uh, provide you with a specific price for your airport. Merci, Frédéric. Um, very, very well, and we'll be able to uh, to answer any questions that you may have uh, through the emails uh, that I will be giving you at the, the end of the presentation. But uh, I think, Frédéric, uh, this uh, this summarizes pretty well the uh, the intent of the program, but also the uh, the added value that um, 
that it provides to not, not only to the airport but also to the uh, to the entire uh, value chain. Uh, I think that's uh, one of the takeaway here is the, uh, the how broad your uh, your safeguard label has been uh, has been put uh, put out there with uh, with different organizations such as hotels or various companies and I think that the, for our industry uh, ensuring that we keep the entire value chain um, tight tight together because of the uh, the impact that it has with the passengers I think that it was very well represented thank you for that uh, presentation uh, Frederick thank you so we will be uh, moving on to our last presentation uh, from uh, Mr. Ivan Basato from uh, Aeroporti di Roma, uh, which manages two airports, as, uh, as you know, but he will uh, be going through, uh, through all of this. Uh, and it's quite interesting because for, for all of us that have that are part of this industry, uh, Aeroporti di Roma has been uh, pretty much at the uh, at the forefront and leading the way in a, in a lot of cases on on, on many initiatives uh, to uh, to ensure that passengers were not gonna uh, be afraid traveling and then and they've been doing a very very good job at uh, at reassuring the the traveling public but also uh, we, we we must say that uh, also guiding a lot of uh, a lot of airports as to uh, where we uh, we should be aiming our efforts so without any further ado uh, Mr. Basato I'll uh, leave the floor to you thank you Danny thank you for your kind words uh, good morning uh, or good afternoon good afternoon depending where the, you are in this moment uh, yes, I'm uh, uh, leading uh, the operations in Aeroporto di Roma. My name is Ivan Bassato, and I'm very happy to participate to this uh, webinar. So we can uh, start with the first uh, slide. Thank you. Uh, the contents of my presentations uh, can be summarized in these three main uh, areas. Uh, I will provide some uh, information about uh, uh, the company and the two airports that we operate here in Rome, in Italy. Uh, before and uh, uh, during the pandemic times. Then we will have a look uh, at uh, how we implemented uh, these two very important programs of uh, ACI uh, in the middle of the summer 2020, uh, the airport Earth accreditation, and afterwards, by the end of the year, uh, uh, we were uh, engaged in the, in the audit with BV uh, to obtain the safe label, as it was explained uh, uh, earlier. And then uh, we will also uh, have a look at our response strategy uh, for recreating the conditions of safe air travel and uh, progressing hopefully towards a new normality. The next, please. At a glance, our company operates the two airports of Rome, Rome Fiumicino, the largest intercontinental gate and, uh, of Italy, and uh, Rome Ciampino, the city airport of uh, Rome. In uh, 2019, we, um, we, we had uh, two airports of almost 50 million passengers, uh, roughly uh, one quarter, 26% of the all air transport passengers in Italy. Uh, Fiumicino, 43.5 million passengers, major hub uh, airport in Europe, and uh, uh, we were uh, happily uh, cooperating at the airport with more than 100 airlines uh, uh, serving to other destinations. China, Greater China and North America as the two uh, most important uh, uh, markets for the long haul operations out of Rome, uh, in the direction of Rome. And uh, uh, I wanted since the beginning to introduce all the labels that we actively pursued in the, the last years and uh, uh, most of all also in the year of the COVID in 2020 uh, to get uh, an international uh, uh, recognition according to international standards of the results and the performances of the two airports. I will explain uh, later how these uh, uh, labels, these badges fit actually in our uh, strategy to, response to, to respond to COVID. Next one, please. Uh, a quick look at the pandemic trends in Italy, in the European Union, in the USA. Italy was the first country in Europe uh, hit by um, the 
COVID disease by uh, the entrance of the virus in uh, Europe uh, as early as uh, uh, beginning of March uh, 2020. We already had uh, the first national lockdown, which lasted until uh, May 4th. So we anticipated a little bit the first wave in Europe. We had a long, relatively and relatively quiet summer. And uh, in the in the autumn, actually, we followed uh, the appearance of second wave in Europe, uh, which is uh, uh, persist persistently staying as a number of daily cases uh, since uh, uh, October, November last year. And now we have a spike in the last part of March, uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, actually facing the possibility to have a third wave in the country. So we are entering in a period where probably final part of the winter, beginning of the spring 2021, uh, new lockdowns will be required uh, by the government. But I will speak about this later. Uh, it is important to say that the prevention measures for air transport were mainly established uh, between March and May 2020, and they stay stable since then. Uh, why is that? Because all the guidelines and the, all the new procedures that we had at to identify, to protect air passengers, to protect the operators of the airport, were actually elaborating in the specific time frame. The next one, please. The impact on traffic was huge. It still is uh, very uh, important. Uh, we are running the beginning of 2021 with a, a minus 90% uh, compared to the pre-COVID situations of passengers in our two airports. So uh, air traffic, uh, uh, air connectivity is sti uh, still pretty much depressed and uh, uh, almost annihilated by the effects of uh, COVID on our, on our industry. In 2020, we had uh, uh, a bit less than 10 million passengers. Uh, we are basically back to the levels of uh, traffic that we had at the opening of the airport in Fiumicino in the 60s. So we are 60. Uh, years almost uh, in the past in terms of uh, uh, business size and uh, activities at the two airports. Uh, next one, please. Our strategy as a report di Roma, as Danny mentioned at the beginning, uh, to ensure that uh, we recreate the, con the conditions for safer travel and that we can uh, achieve a new normality is based on three pillars. First of all, a prerequisite to restore air, co air connectivity is to have a biosafe airport and a biosafe air transport. Uh, we need to, to, to achieve this as a result, and I, I think we did it, uh, but also we need to communicate it properly to the, to the customers, to our passengers. An effective way to achieve this uh, objective is to have uh, third-party health certifications and the instruments provided by SCI were very handy to this, to this very, very useful to this extent. Uh, then we have, uh, we speak about this also, uh, the creation of clean corridors where passengers are tested before departure as a safer alternative to trust-based fiduciary quarantines and uh, digitalization, uh, digitization of uh, health protocols, uh, smart processes in place, new smart processes in place at the airport uh, are very uh, important, very meaningful, and uh, it's a, a practical way, uh, something that we have in our uh, toolkit to recreate the conditions for a recovery of air traffic. Next one, please. Uh, first of all, we had to, we wanted to uh, implement strictly uh, the new rules and uh, to contribute to the creation of new best practices. So, first of all, uh, it was a, a, a strong commitment to, to, for us to, to implement the, the regulations to um, uh, counter the challenges of COVID uh, issued by the government, by the European Union uh, uh, competent agencies. And I, we did it with discipline and with consistency. Uh, we had a, a new COVID laws issued by the Italian government uh, uh, at the beginning every two weeks, uh, afterwards every month. Uh, but the aviation part of this regulation is actually stable uh, and uh, fully uh, implemented since May uh, 2020. Uh, a fundamental document uh, in Europe is the European Aviation Health Safety Protocol uh, issued jointly by 
European Aviation Safety Agency, the European Center for Disease Control in May 20, and we signed that as a, a pilot airport uh, uh, right at the beginning. So we have a, a signed agreement with EASA, uh, committing ourselves to implement uh, fully uh, with discipline this uh, safety protocol. And then we added the, the, the Italian CAA guidelines, NX guidelines, uh, specifically published for uh, COVID, for fighting the COVID in the air transport settings in May 20. We wanted to stimulate innovation and create best practice. I will just say that we have a standing COVID innovation lab for the quick adoption of new technologies, for sanitization, for ensuring social distancing, and for identifying properly uh, the um, uh, persons with, uh, with symptoms. Uh, continuous communication to public and even uh, computer modeling uh, to validate the new setups of airports versus the safety requirements. But a, a very important part I would like to speak about is the third party certification on new airport setup. Uh, very early we came up with an uh, idea that we needed the third parties to certify our measures and our new processes. At the beginning, in, as early as June 2020, we had the certification of the Italian, uh, very, very important, uh, the largest Italian accreditor, RINA, about um, the biosafety trust certification of our uh, new uh, airport processes and our airport facilities created for COVID. But we were very happily engaged in the airport health accreditation program of ACI uh, in August 2020 and uh, in December 2020, uh, finally. Uh, the BV audit uh, and the granting of the safe label uh, to Fiumicino and Ciampino airports. Next one, please. The biosafe airport looks very different. Uh, hundreds of initiatives. I will not comment those. They are, I will make available in any case the presentation uh, after the webinar, uh, but really many, many different projects, uh, initiatives created uh, to respond and uh, to uh, uh, apply the new regulations to the our airports, but also uh, to uh, adopt as quickly as possible uh, the best technologies available uh, in the market to becoming available in the market after a, an internal process of a validation. Uh, so all those pictures are coming from the field uh, of our two airports. Next one, please. Let's speak now about the two programs and the benefits that we immediately saw in uh, um, joining the programs proposed by ACI. The next one. Uh, airport health accreditation program. I think the, 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 the biggest, the most positive thing about this uh, uh, accreditation program uh, is that it was made available very quickly by ACI and we should be grateful to ACI for uh, uh, reaching this uh, um, important milestone mid 2020. Uh, it is a comprehensive documental assessment uh, that the uh, most appropriate health and hygiene standards are correctly implemented at the airport. So it's a documental assessment, but it was something that could be achieved quickly and uh, substantially. It's a third party validation of the range of sanitary measures that we adopted already in mid summer 2020 at the two airports. And it is granted by an international recognized uh, party like ACI. So these were the main benefits of the health accreditation program. And I think we had a lot of added value in being capable to say our two airports got the approval and the accreditation of ACI, first airport in Europe uh, to achieve this goal in August 2020. And next one. Uh, the Airport Health Measures Audit Program of ACI is uh, uh, complementing clearly and uh, uh, filling uh, the, the path that uh, uh, the, the high speed that uh, ACI uh, granted uh, to make the first program available to the industry, to airports like us, uh, was necessarily leaving uh, behind. So the gap was that we needed something on site, uh, a fully uh, comprehensive audit of the measures uh, taken by the airport, uh, 
performed by health and safety auditors, professional auditors, clearly, uh, with, uh, uh, with experience of uh, Bureau Veritas uh, and uh, coming also from other uh, industries in these, uh, in these uh, fields. Uh, so, very uh, engaging process. A lot of work was necessary on our side in a short time because we wanted actually to become uh, the first airport that could say, okay, now we have also the safeguard label okay, granted with this new program that uh, implies the, uh, the verification on site of all the measures that we take in. 119 checkpoints were audited uh, with no failures, with suggestions about. Uh, ways to improve the processes on uh, to fill certain gaps and we were happy we could have this uh, exchange of views or with with uh, with the professional auditors uh, one uh, positive aspect uh, clearly um, a, a plus of the safeguard label an additional plus is that actually covers uh, the full uh, experience of the passengers at the airport so the entire passenger journey as it was said earlier uh, is covered by the uh, safeguard label and the safeguard label was really the last missing piece in our uh, strategy of getting uh, uh, all our measures certified by uh, external parties uh, with a very high reputation in the industry next one please the biosafe airport uh, uh, makes uh, passengers satisfied and uh, i would say more relaxed about the seriousness and uh, uh, the attention of uh, airports and the air transport industry in uh, implementing the safety measures to uh, for adequate protection for ensuring safety and uh, the safe and healthy uh, experience in our uh, infrastructures uh, we ran continuously surveys uh, during the pandemic times uh, to check if passengers are okay or are, uh, I would say, fully satisfied with the measures that we're taking and the results are outstanding. 99% um, of the passengers uh, declare that they have uh, had a safe travel experience at Rome airports. Uh, over 90% of the passengers consider themselves satisfied passengers in relation to the measures taken to avoid the contagion at our airports in Rome. Uh, we have a cooperation with the Airbus. Uh, we survey the passengers according to an Airbus scheme. Uh, Fiumicino is part of the airports or the, the major airports that are in the panel that is considered by Airbus. And uh, we uh, measure that 90-80% uh, of the passengers uh, of our airports are actually using the uh, mask uh, correctly. And almost all of them are actually wearing a mask, which is uh, a very good result uh, in comparison to what is visible outside the air transport system in general. 90% of the passengers actually respect the social distance within the airport terminal. And we run continuously these uh, measures and these surveys with the approach of uh, uh, adapting and correcting continuously if we find uh, things that need, need improvement. Next one, please. So now I would like to say something about uh, uh, the, the path that will take us. You see that in January, still in February, still minus 90% of the traffic, so pretty much zero traffic. Uh, now I would like to say something about the strategy that we are using to recreate a condition for uh, a new normality and the restore of our connectivity. Next one, please. So how do we see the, the, the future of our travel? Uh, we think that the virus uh, uh, will continue to impact our industry for a long time. Of course, we are not alone in thinking this, but it, it is clear that uh, as the vaccine campaigns uh, commenced, they are proceeding, sometimes slowly proceeding, but consistently. Uh, vaccines are rolled out in Italy, in Europe and around the world. Right now, the projection for the community in our country is not before uh, the last quarter of 2021. Uh, we think that uh, uh, for the next two, three years, at least, uh, the virus will not be fully eradicated uh, from the society, uh, from our 
country and in general from our uh, industry. So we need travel protocols able to identify and control infected passengers uh, and these protocols will stay for a certain time. Uh, the next one, please. What could be these travel protocols? I mean, so far in 2020, uh, the main response of Italy was to avoid, avoid Italian government, the European institutions, let's avoid travel uh, altogether. Uh, how is that? Uh, the most uh, important measures adopted by the uh, European institution was a self-quarantine. Self-quarantine, uh, of course, uh, discourage uh, travel and uh, uh, do not create the conditions for restoring air connectivity. We think self-quarantine, fiduciary quarantine, maybe border closure, the, the, these are not fully 100% safe measures. Fiduciary obligation, uh, uh, it is a fiduciary obligation based on individual's behavior. It is not easy to enforce. It is a disproportionate measure. 99% of the passengers, air passengers, are healthy persons. Uh, they are not uh, carrying the virus uh, uh, around. Um, Lately, uh, beginning of 2021, measures switched to pre-departure testing, but it is still uh, an uncoordinated movement uh, among, among states. We need testing protocols homogeneous in European Union uh, and hopefully across, across the world. Uh, so our proposal is to have all passengers from critical areas subject to certified pre-flight rapid testing. 100% passengers controlled before embarking on board the plane, uh, with a better safety perception on board, without restrictions on arrival. And we campaign with our government, with the European institutions to achieve this goal. Next one, please. I will go a bit quick on these uh, charts. Uh, we created the, the conditions for pre-departure testing by rolling out um, testing facilities uh, at Rome airports very early. Uh, we started uh, on airport testing in Rome in August 2020. Now we have four screening areas uh, with the capacity to perform uh, at least uh, 5,000 tests per day, and we can escalate this capacity to 50,000 tests per day. So it is not a way to restore fully 100% of the traffic. It is not scalable to the traffic that we had before COVID, but it is a way to restart. In September uh, 2020, we started the first worldwide COVID-tested flight between Rome, Fiumicino, and Milan Linate. It was a domestic flight. The purpose was to prove that it could be uh, operationally feasible, that we could integrate uh, health testing, uh, um, COVID testing into an airport process. And that was successful to that extent. Let's uh, go to the next one, please. But the big, big step uh, came uh, in November uh, 2020. Uh, we got finally a decree of Italian government allowing the establishment of uh, transatlantic uh, COVID tested corridors. Uh, we are operating clean corridors, safe corridors since the beginning of December up to today. And the model, the protocol is approved uh, already until end of June. Uh, in December, we had two uh, routes, strategic routes, very important for Rome and for Italy, New York to Rome Fiumicino, operated by Alitalia, and Atlanta to Rome Fiumicino, operated by Delta Airlines. These two routes are actually COVID tested. It means that passengers are tested before departure in the United States, and they are retested after disembarkation over here in Rome, 100% of them. Next one, please. The results, it is a very robust uh, safety uh, protocol, health safety protocol. Uh, we had so far uh, more than 5,000 passengers uh, arriving to Rome tested. Uh, we could identify uh, about, uh, uh, I would say, uh, 25 passengers actually positive at antigen. Uh, but only nine of them were confirmed positive cases uh, at the PCR, uh, the second test that has to be mandatory performed after an antigen positivity. Uh, it means that uh, 
these uh, flow of passengers were basically almost fully exempted from uh, the virus. Uh, the prevalence in the virus prevalence in this case was one, the real one was 1 1.7 over 1,000 passengers. And we are speaking about a flow of passengers coming from a country that in the last three months had on average a number of new daily cases three times of, uh, compared to that of Italy. Um, high operational effectiveness, basically all operations closed in two hours after block on and uh, uh, the satisfaction of passengers was uh, exceeding the 90%. It is a safe protocol and most importantly, it created the conditions for the restoring of some uh, traffic, flows, uh, traffic flows between the two countries. Uh, we experienced the uh, increases of passengers that you can see on the top left corner. Next one, please. Actually, we did also a follow-up uh, research. Uh, we, in cooperation with the health authorities, uh, we looked at the um, uh, passengers and the people uh, being tested positive after uh, in the uh, days uh, following their arrival to Italy, just to check if there was the possibility of a high number of imported cases. In this case, we identify by cross-referencing the relevant database, we identified only five occurrences. So uh, really the uh, prevalence uh, of uh, this population of passengers as it was, uh, as they were tested at the airports and after the airports were, was very, very small. And this reassured the authorities that the uh, decree that authorized these kind of flights, the clean corridors, was uh, fully justified from the point of view of the protection of the safety of the public. So the COVID test flight protocols perfectly match the new US CDC order when this order was issued in January 26th and the project is officially endorsed by the United Nations World Tourism Organization as one of the models that can be adopted to restart tourism and air travel. Next one. Thank you. Last things, obviously, are about the digitization of the protocols. Uh, as the traffic grows up with a partial recovery of the uh, pre-COVID volumes, we will need um, uh, smart tools, digital systems to handle uh, the medical certificates. It can be either uh, the testing certificates or the vaccine certificates, but for sure, uh, this kind of systems will play a big role in the months to come. So we started uh, uh, the, a pilot uh, with, a, with an app, with an health app, AOK Pass, uh, one of the apps that are available on the market uh, at the beginning of the year on the route between Rome and New York uh, in cooperation with the International Chamber of Commerce. And the uh, last, last slide, please. But we are working uh, in this uh, uh, period to the creation of a travel health portal. So we are advocating uh, with the Italian government for the creation of such a system. Uh, we need a digital way that replace paper certificate for the safe handling of uh, the test result uh, that will be uh, more and more uh, used for uh, approving the boarding of the persons uh, on board uh, planes. And this system has to be linked with the airline systems. Uh, if we are able to uh, achieve this, we will have a very strong, powerful tool for effective contact tracing, which we missed during 2020. So we are in close cooperation with the authority right now in Rome, in Italy, to create such systems. And finally, uh, we recall uh, the next one, please. We recall uh, the most important pillars for restoring uh, air mobility in a safe way. COVID tested flight protocols uh, in a biosafe airport, in a biosafe air transport, ensured by the certifications of third parties, is the way forward. Should be widely adopted during the phase of coexistence with the SARS-CoV-2. We do not know how long this phase will be actually, but we expect 
for the months to come or for the years to come that we will have the virus in the society. So we need these protocols, otherwise we cannot have at the same time a safe air travel. Thank you again to ACI for letting me uh, uh, presenting uh, a part of our proposition uh, to the industry. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Bassato. I think that was, I mean, in, in, in at great length, uh, very, very interesting. And I think that maybe I, I'll ask all our panelists to open uh, their, um, maybe their cameras for, we'll take maybe a few questions here, but then I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Bassato, because it, it, the, the awards are, are, are good, the visibility is good, but I think would it be right for me to, 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 to to take from your presentation, because you mentioned the, how the two, the, the, the two programs complemented one another, meaning the AHA and the, um, and the BV uh, audit, and all of the other ones for, for that matter. But quality control and quality assurance is kind of the key for you in, in order to make sure that everything stays in line and works well. I think that you you would it be right for me to say that you kind of approach this on a on a management system approach? Absolutely yes. Uh, the very uh, positive thing of being part of these programs is that we could achieve a, a, a holistic approach, right? Uh, so sometimes in our operations, especially during emergencies or during crises. Uh, uh, you, you have your group, your personal cognitive biases. Uh, you are somehow conditioned by your, your, your past, by your ideas that you think are the best ideas in, uh, uh, available uh, in, uh, uh, at that specific moment. It is not true. So it is important that you have these opportunities, even if they come at a cost. But it's important as a company to invest this money in speaking uh, to people uh, with the experience of BV, with the experience of the uh, of the colleagues in, in ACI, with the peers from our airports, uh, challenging our mindset and challenging our beliefs. Uh, this is what happens real in the real world when you are engaged in such certification mm -hmm. program. So there is always something that we gain in terms of uh, more knowledge, uh, more comprehensive view. Uh, it's it's a, the proactive challenging of our ideas and our biases that actually uh, make things improve at the airport and uh, force us to communicate what we do in a better way, in a more effective way uh, to the customers. So it's really only only with third-party certification, in my view, in our view, uh, you can be sure that you have really looked at the toll corners. That is that is not something that it, I mean, based on what the industry know and based on the industry knowledge uh, through these certification programs you actually look at all corners and you ensure that you consider what every everything that needs to be ensured at that time and uh, uh, you have a very healthy challenge to your uh, beliefs and it's sometimes common sense is not enough eh? or uh, sometimes uh, your the internal knowledge of your team is not enough you need some some fresh blood from outside and competent blood and competent blood right no totally totally agree um now the interesting part uh and i like to say the, the last part of of your presentation because that's this is where we're going and this is how aci is also we're working with the uh, with the the uh all, all of its regions and, and members on how we're going to be able to assist because we need to get this restarted again at a at a larger or at a a greater pace and, and, and a greater uh, extent. So, the, part of your quality assurance and quality control uh, program for all of this is going to be totally integrated with the with the restart. I mean, you, you, what what do you see as as the difficulty in in keeping all of this in line as 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 it progresses? One uh, one uh, challenge that uh, for sure. Uh, we have to face is uh, uh, we are still running uh, in an almost empty uh, airport. So there are some things that are now are feasible, uh, but uh, we are not sure that when uh, we are at 50% or 60% uh, 
uh, recovery stage, uh, they remain feasible or they remain uh, practicable to the same extent. Uh, so uh, one thing that we did was that we, we actually ran computer simulation modeling uh, to see uh, what is actually the limit of physical distancing with our terminal footprint. And in airport, especially during these times, it cannot be quickly adapted the, 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 the footage, the, the, the square meter that you have available uh, uh, of airport terminals. This, this requires capex of years, uh, long-term investments. It, 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 it is not a tactical lever that you have at your disposal. Uh, so be being sure that where your bottleneck, we know where our potential bottlenecks are. We do not have bottlenecks but uh, uh, we actually got the awareness where we where we might face uh, bottlenecks in the capacity of the airport and capacity of terminal systems in the months to come and i would uh, highly recommend uh, to talk to uh, people like the people of the uh, quality programs uh, of aci uh, about these uh, these topics and i would highly recommend to run computer modeling if possible uh, now there are very there are excellent tools available on uh, on, uh, on the market and quickly you can uh, uh, simulate uh, certain traffic volumes, certain amounts of passengers moving within the airport across the terminal around the terminal area uh, without actually having those passengers. Right. Um, very interesting. You've touched on on one point in uh, Ose Angel. If you maybe give a, give me your thoughts on uh, on this but has your um as i always say we went majority of airports as capacity was growing over the last few uh, few years went from being uh over capacity to all of a sudden overbuilt uh in a, in a matter of uh, of a few weeks how for you uh in 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 mexico managing a large network of airports are you um, keeping in line all of the uh, coordination uh, for the for the current uh, situation but also uh, uh, planning for the restart how are you keeping that in line to your entire network well uh, we have you know uh, uh, I committed investment now with the authority. As I said in my presentation, we had to revise uh, this investment plan because of the, you know, the drop in the in the, uh, the passenger drop. And uh, I agree with with uh, Mr. Basado. Uh, it's very difficult to plan for this new situation because we don't have really time and, and we don't have resources to to grow the infrastructure in order to meet you know the the, the new uh, standards in terms of uh, physical distancing so uh, what we are you know planning we're planning for the next five uh, years and, and and we're trying to to you know to to see where our main needs today uh, you know considering the pandemic and we are focusing our investment in new technology in order to you know be able to apply new procedures and and you know be able also to to update our procedures to the new situation that again uh, if we think about uh, keeping all these measures in the long term in terms of infrastructure in terms of um, you know keeping uh, physical distancing is is that possible to to achieve those standards we don't have standards i mean but if we would want to 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 keep those uh, those uh, distances between the people uh, in our uh, uh, airports it would be only possible to to achieve those those distances or those standards in in the short and mid-term i mean it's not possible to to keep the physical distances without the existing within the existing infrastructure and uh, we wouldn't have time or money even to to adapt our airports to that situation yeah, very, very true. Um, and how was? And I want to go back to a little bit to the uh, to the EHA because I mean you are uh, managing many airports in 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 Mexico and some in the, in the Caribbean, but but in Mexico 
with the AHA. How was that? How was that perceived? Uh, I mean, from the authorities and also from from passengers, because I'm I'm guessing that you guys have have broadcasted the uh, the the milestone of receiving accreditation. But how is that being perceived on a on a national level for for an airport or a group of airports your size to uh, to seek? A little bit like what the uh, Aeroporto di Roma did to, to 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 be out there and trying to seek for uh, to to enhance their process. But how for you? Uh, how was that perceived by the general public and authorities? Yeah, as I was as I said in the presentation, it was very very well perceived by, by our stakeholders, by the authorities, and, and you know, and, and airlines and and the rest of our stakeholders. Uh, as I said, we were, you know, at the beginning of the crisis, we were very, very active trying to look for the best possible international practices and measures and try to apply all these things and all these new things in, in our airports. But uh, as Mr. Basado mentioned, uh, we needed a third party to tell us that this was right. And this is where ACI program came to, to help us. So it was very helpful for us, the program. Um, we, we, you know, as soon as we knew about it, we, we engage with the team. We, we try to put in place as soon as possible because we need, because we knew that this was going to be a very, you know, helpful uh, program for us. And as I said before, it was very, very well perceived by the by the authorities and by by the rest of our stakeholders. Hmm. Yeah, indeed, uh, and and does that provide you? Uh, maybe the question is for both of you, but. Uh, the fact of doing the the, the BV and then the the, the the AHA and for for Rome's case uh, other uh, achievement does that that does that bring an open ear from authorities from either the health authorities and not just the the CAA but health authorities are they more inclined to listen to uh, to an Arab, to, to to a group like yours uh, on 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 suggestions on on how to do things maybe uh, on a national level. Well, in the case of Mexico, I think yes, uh, we work uh, at the beginning and in the middle of the crisis with, uh, with very close with the authority because, you know, that situation was new uh, for, for, for all the industry. And this process with the ACI was helpful not only for us, but also for them. We uh, uh, were able to work together with them to try to establish uh, uh, you know, new, new regulation uh, on place in Mexico. And this process with the ACI was very, use, very useful for that as well, not only for us, but also for the authority. Hmm. Very good. Anything on that, uh, Mr. Basato? Yeah, in our case, uh, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, ensuring top uh, quality to the health safety, uh, to the application of the health safety uh, measure, the implementation in the airport, uh, reassures the authorities. So I wouldn't say it's one specific label or it's a one specific badge, it's one specific program, but the entire set uh, speaks of uh, an organization that commits to uh, quality in the field of health protection. And uh, of course, the authorities appreciate that. And uh, the, 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 it's a, an industrial, uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a health safety protocol uh, implemented uh, with um, the qualities of uh, an industrial protocol. It's, it's, uh, it multiplies uh, the benefits of uh, the new laws and the new regulations. And uh, compliance is. Uh, 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 it, it doesn't become a concern, uh, it is not a concern anymore uh, for the authorities if you have such programs in place, if you've implemented these programs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Frédéric, um, uh, to, to uh, close... That, sorry, sorry, Danny, but the, the, the fact that it's, if it is perceived as a management system, okay, if there is a management system that, uh, like we do with uh, uh, aviation safety, like we do with uh, um, health and safety, labor health and safety. If there is a management system behind, the authorities are more uh, uh, convinced that they are doing that seriously, that they are taking that seriously, and the public as well, not only. Authorities. Yeah, Sorry very true. 
Very true, and, I, and, I, and I'm sure that this will be going, I'm sure the authorities will be going towards uh, asking for more uh, of that management approach from uh, from organizations such as airports. Um, Frédéric, uh, to close, uh, we, we, we've touched on, uh, on uh, obviously, the protocols of, uh, of BV or, or AHA, but uh, you did mention that everything was done at a local level, but it would be, uh, it, can you give us a little bit of, uh, of insight on how it's being done locally by uh, the, um, the the different BV offices? Uh, are they looking at the national uh, regulation uh, primarily? Uh, I mean, give us a little bit more on that. Thank you, Danny, for your question. Um, yeah, the, the, pro the program is uh, managed as a wall uh, because we, we need to ensure uh, an harmonized uh, implementation uh, in Mexico, in Italy, in Asia or anywhere in the, in the world. So th that's the reason why uh, the Aeronautical and Space Agency is managing the wall program. But as you said, the audits um, is uh, managed locally by uh, local people and so uh, they take care of local regulation, local let's say practices uh, and so on, local organization which could be different between Europe, uh, Latin America uh, for the different uh, role and responsibilities of uh, stakeholders at the airport. Some, some in some places you have uh, airport authorities in other places uh, you have a, a limited role to the airport operator so um, really the key for us is that uh, audits and uh, inspection uh, the, the management system i fully agree with what has been said before it, it's the key for the sustainability and um, and uh, the adaptability uh, to the traffic uh, which will increase and the new, the, the new measures to be implemented. So everything is managed locally, just we ensure a, a global uh, and an harmonized way uh, from, uh, from our offices. Yeah, thank you Anna, for that, Frédéric. Uh, so we are at the end of our uh, ACI webinar. I would like to thank uh, our panelists and uh, for uh, very rich uh, information uh, and presentation. Uh, thank you very much. I wish you uh, all the best because uh, we need more examples like you in order to lead uh, and to uh, demonstrate to, uh, to authorities that airports are actually leading the way and making sure that we are keeping the uh, passengers safe and we want uh, uh, our role in, in 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 your local and, and, and world economy to uh, to be uh, to remain at the forefront of uh, the need of the, the of the population. So thank you very much for this. Uh, thank you for your work, and we would like to thank you uh, for participating. And uh, we will leave uh, with the last slide uh, that we will put, where we'll have the. Uh, the email address, if ever you would like to have some more information from uh, from ACI uh, on the, these two programs, and uh, until uh, until we meet again, I would like to uh, to thank you and wishing you all a good day. Thank you very much.